Good afternoon. Welcome to Life Unrehearsed. My name is Matt Delavecchio, specializing in life transitions, downsizing, and the senior living industry. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist specializing in grief and loss. Coming right up on the first half of today's show, we're going to talk about firewalking. That's right. Who would have thought that it can actually serve as a catalyst for change and transform your fears into positive energy? We're, we're going to hear from a dynamic Montrealer that organizes these firewalks. Corey, ever done a firewalk in your life? Actually, not only have I done it, I've done it with our guest today. <laughs> and I want to tell you that it was a catalyst for change. Really? In fact, she knows this, that I was thinking about changing jobs, but I was scared. And after doing a firewalk, I said, if I can do that, I can change jobs. So You're she really, kidding. it's it's an amazing thing. She's an amazing woman. So yeah, the short answer is yes, I've done a firewalk. Well, it's going to be, you? Uh, no, I haven't, <laughs> haven't done a firewalk. Geez, what's the craziest thing I've done? I don't know. I've uh, <laughs> done a little parasailing. Uh, what else? Uh, what, would, a, would a taxi ride in Greece uh, be considered as one of the craziest <laughs> things I've done? Yeah. Uh, maybe. <laughs> no, yeah. but good for you. I, I can't wait to talk to Nancy and, and uh, who would have thought, you know, so, uh, and it was life transforming f for you. So that's mm -hmm. coming up soon. What do we have coming up on the second half? On the second half, we are addressing speech challenges in children and in adults. We're going to be talking to two speech therapists about the latest methods and therapies that can be used to assist people with speech issues. That's coming up after the 3.30 news. Yeah, very interesting. It's amazing when you talk to people, uh, whether it's kids, uh, teenagers, adults, uh, how much, uh, how many people are challenged with some speech issues. So that's coming up after 3.30 news, like Corey said. All right. So our first guest, Nancy Chernoff, she's the creator and owner owner of Fearless Flame. Nancy is a corporate trainer, motivational speaker, and health coach, and she's going to teach us how firewalking serves as a catalyst for change and transforms fear into positive energy. Nancy, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. I'm here. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> we're good. We're good. You know, Nancy, I speak so highly of you. And now we got our listeners have to see and hear how. So let's start with if you can tell us your story where you started, and how you became a firewalker. You know, it feels like I've said this story so many times, so I guess one more time is not going to hurt so people understand how this all came about. So it's, it's, it's getting many more years. So probably in 2002, I left the corporate world because it just was not working for me anymore, and I had to make some big decisions in my life. And I came across this amazing workshop that I did at a camp in upstate New York in 2005. And this led me to go and get trained with this woman named Peggy Dillon at Sundor, who is considered the mother of firewalking. And I went to her training. It was three weeks. I spent $10,000, and I came back as a corporate firewalker. And the reason being is that life for me at that moment in my life was just not going that well, and I knew that I had to recreate my life in some form. And because I experienced this at this camp, when there was probably 200 kids walking on fire and doing all kinds of exercises, and Nancy was standing in the back full of fear and just couldn't move forward. So it was a great way for me to look at my own fear and to see how these people were trained and then ultimately go and do this work and find something new that I wanted to create in my life. But this has been since 2005, and I've been doing it ever since, and it's been amazing. And just to say, I'm so excited that it's happening again in about six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Nancy, it, I just love that you actually had the guts to do it. Um, you know, I started my own company. I was corporate guy, similar to you in the corporate world, and, and it was six years ago, just yesterday, as a matter of fact, that I started my own business. And I'm interested, you know, the, going back to that period, you know, it must have been a giant leap of faith for you. And, and how were you feeling then and how would you feel now? You know, Matt, it's a really good question. And I was looking at a whole bunch of quotes that I've been keeping in store. And one that I always use, and I use it today, and I've always, you know, I want to say it on air and maybe people will really get something from this. You know, I have to embrace fear because fear doesn't go away. I just have to keep on doing it afraid. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, beautiful. So if you ask me, you know, the leap of faith that I took, I was, I, I was so scared. It just, you know, I had a huge job and I was making a lot of money at the time. 
And people are often saying to me, like, how could you do that? Especially I'll always go back and remember my mother's words. Like, is my daughter Meshiga, that's a Jewish word for crazy, <laughs> like going to leave this job that she's had for so many years doing so well to go and become a firewalking instructor. Mm-hmm. And I just knew that I was, you know, I was afraid, but I just had to do it afraid, and I did it. And that's what I've been guiding, teaching, professing. When we do things, it's not because we're not afraid. We're doing it because we are afraid and we have to move forward into the next stage of our life, the next movement of what we want to move into. Fair enough. That's the voice of Nancy Chernoff. She is the owner of Fearless Flame. And we're talking about transforming your fears through firewalking. And we're talking about hardcore, literally firewalking. This isn't just the metaphor for something. You are walking on fire, on coals. So, Nancy, why do people firewalk? Exactly. You know, Corey, you you firewalk, so, you know, you you know what that felt like, and you did a lot of the other activities that we do mm-hmm. in a Fearless Flame workshop, and we've added in a bunch of new things that we're going to be doing this uh, this in the next six weeks, which I'm very excited about. But the really, the main reason why people are walking on fire, because they will ask me, why would I walk on fire? And it's not the actual calls, it's almost the metaphor behind it. If I could walk through this, what else can I walk through in my life that I thought was impossible? So you are standing in front of 1,200-degree coals, and you are afraid, but you're asking yourself that inner question, can I move through this? While looking at one of the obstacles during the workshop, we look at the obstacles that we're working on, something that you want to move through or cross, can I cross through this obstacle? And it's just a metaphor to show you that you can. Like, it is possible to walk on hog coals. And the question I get, next question was, am I going to get burnt? You know, I tell Mm -hmm. everybody you're not going to get burnt. You may get a fire kiss, but it's a blessing and it's a badge of honor. And it's to show you your potential, to show you the possibilities of moving forward into your greatest fears. You know, it's. I'm just listening to you and I'm trying to picture it. I have never done it, Corey. You could relate. So I need a few more details, Nancy. So, <laughs> like, this is the real deal. You're barefoot. You're walking on these hot coals. How long are you walking for? And and are people you walk? Do you run through it as fast as you can? Give, give me the experience. I'm going to give you the experience. Well, first of all, it's a whole day experience. So people will join us in the morning at nine o'clock. We do a beautiful, beautiful place in Ormstown, Quebec with the most amazing team that I have, and everybody meets there, and we introduce ourselves, and the lead-up to the fire walk are all these other, um, we call it experience-based learning, and what that is, you have an experience, and you learn from it. It's not just a lot of talk. You actually physically do all these exercises that ultimately lead us to the fire, which is the last one. When we finally get to the fire, it takes two and a half hours to burn down. We're burning down three-quarters of a quart of wood. It's a spectacular. It's at night. It's dark. The moon is shining. Sometimes there's snow on the ground. Sometimes there's not. That's my biggest fear that we're going to have a snowstorm, but that's not going to happen. And then we're all outside gathered. We actually build the fire together. We light it together. Then we go back in, and we wait for it to burn down two and a half hours, and then they come back out. And we do some ceremonial things. We bring in a lot of energy. The energy is what really helps us move through the fire. So we're singing and we're dancing. We're playing instruments. And the members and the participants are basically walking through the fire with an intention of what they worked on for the entire day. So it could be anything. It could be a broken relationship. It could be a loss of job. It could be a challenging child or an elderly parent. It's many things come up, and sometimes you think that what you want to work on doesn't even come up because of the different types of meditations and visualization work that we do during the day. So as you're standing in front of these 1,200-degree coals, Mm. you're looking down. It's spectacular because it's glistening. The flame is, is just beautiful, and we make the intention. We walk the fire three times. We walk it once for ourselves. We walk it once for somebody else. And we walk it once in complete silence that you could hear a pin drop. And it's all about literally praying for what you need to move through in your life that you're really having difficulties doing right now. Hmm. It's just amazing hearing that. I'm hoping that there is snow that day so you can jump off. No, don't say that. No snow, no snow. So, random question. Who is your demographic? Is it men? Is it women? Is it 
20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, mixture, families, couples. Right now, my demographic is, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go up to the camps that I usually work at over the summer this past year because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But I work with a lot of teenagers and adolescents. And just to give an example, the workshop that we're doing on November 13th, we're a mixture. And I'm glad to say we already have three men signed up. A lot of times this work, women have a tendency to go to this. But, you know, no, we're three men. The rest are women. And the age group, I would say, anywhere between 26 and my, I, I don't want to give my age away. And my age. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it goes to show it's 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 a obviously a wide range and um it, it all is about fears and and uh, you're talking we're listening to life on hers here with Matt Delvecchio and Corey Sroda and we're talking with Nancy Chernoff the owner of Fearless Flame and we're talking about how powerful firewalking can be to fight your fears I'm Corey Sroda along with my co-host Matt Delvecchio and we are talking about transforming your fears through firewalking with the owner of Fearless Flame Nancy Chernoff Nancy, I would love if you could share one of the most profound transformations you've seen as a result of the work you do. Do you have an hour? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but maybe the radio station doesn't. First of all, there's, there, there, there's so many. And um, if I have to think of one, I always go back to this time. I was uh, doing a workshop at a camp for overweight teens up in the States and there was a brother and a sister team that were very, very overweight. And when I mean very overweight, they were obese. And they had the opportunity to do the whole day workshop. And I could see throughout the day how challenging this was for them and how they just kept on backing off on a lot of activities. And although their friends were trying to get them to go and cheering them on, it was like actually putting more pressure on them. So they sat in the background and then came the fire. And people were doing it. And then all of a sudden, you saw this brother and sister come up and hold hands and scream, like like literally scream on the top of their lungs that and saying, we are loved. Mm-hmm. And they walked across the fire and literally fell on the ground and started to, like, to bawl. Mm-hmm. And then everybody came around them. And not only were the two of them crying, we had 50 of them crying. <laughs> Uh-huh. And I followed up. I followed up with them for, for for quite a while because I knew that there was something something open for them. The sister ended up losing sixty pounds. Wow! And the brother still was having challenges, but would say to me, "Nancy, you can't imagine how that really transformed my life." My life. And there were so many times that my sister, based on things that have gone on in our life, that we didn't feel loved, we didn't feel safe, and the workshop made a huge difference. I have stories that I can go on and on and tell you about all the transformation that happened with the people. I, you know, there's just too many to tell. Well, Nancy, I'm I'm interested because at the heart of it, I mean, it's the fire walking, um, is the end result, but at the heart of it, it is about facing your fears, regardless of what that fear is. So can you address that? Why, from your perspective, why is it important to face our fears? Well, you know what, Matt, you know, it's so interesting right now because I was just saying this morning to my wife, I was saying that I feel people are being a little bit really too safe right now. And what I mean by safe is not being stupid or silly, but to be safe and satisfied. So fear stops us from satisfaction. It stops us from a lot of joy that we could have in our life. And this is part of, unfortunately, human conditioning. We've been conditioned this way to feel fear and to to not move through things through life. So the job of Fearless Flame is to really get you to recognize it, to look at it, to name it, to look if it's real, and then ask yourself, if it's not real, then why am I not willing to step forward into it? So it's really important about changing the outcome because change is not comfortable. But we need to start taking risks. We need to start facing exposures and having a lot of self-compassion and gentleness, especially now, what we've all gone through in the last year and a half, almost coming up to two years. So we have to stop being so safe and be ready to move into our fears because these fears, if you don't choose to look at them and you keep pushing them down, they're just going to keep coming back and coming back and coming back. 
So when you walk through the fire, you're finally able to recognize that I'm willing to move through this one because I know another one is going to come up right after this one's gone or I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be something next, but I can't stop myself any longer. That's the voice of Nancy Chernoff, uh, the owner of Fearless Flame. She's talking to us on Life on Rehearse, Corey Sirota with Matt Del Vecchio. And we are talking about transforming your fears through firewalking. And I hear you, Nancy. Man, oh man, especially with this pandemic, fears, uh, anxiety over the top. You talk about addressing, and a lot of the work is about these major fears or concerns, issues that people are facing. What about sort of everyday life? How does firewalking help with everyday life? You know what? Could I tell you something, an interesting story? Every time, everyday life, I'm going to talk about my life because I don't know what's happening in other people's lives. But this last year and a half, I wasn't able to do workshops. The other company that I work for, we reduced staff and stopped doing as many workshops there. My -hmm. wife had to stop seeing her clients in person. So it was a very scary time for all of us. And I just sometimes sit in my office and I look in my cupboard and in my cupboard, I have all these representations of all the, because I do the work myself. When when people come to my workshop, it's not only for them, it's for me as well. I'm just the guide, the facilitator. And I sit in my office and I look in the cupboard and I see rebars and I see broken boards and I see arrows. And this year we're going to be walking on glass, which is going to be an amazing thing that's brand new that I've been certified in. And it's just, we have fear all the time around us. So are we going to sit in it or are we going to move through it? Am I going to sit and think about that? I wasn't able to do my Fearless Flame workshop this year and I'm never going to do it again because that's what happens. We start thinking all the worst. We call it anxiety. We start having negative predictions about everything that's going on in our lives. So we really need to sit back. We need to breathe. We need to have some faith, and we have to understand that if we take the chance to move forward, we will see what is on the other side of even the smallest fear. Nancy, it's so interesting what you're saying. In fact, next week we're going to be addressing the topic of brain, uh, healthy brains, healthy lives, and uh, this is scientifically proven. We're going to have a neurologist, and it's reinforcing what you're saying. It's about getting out of your comfort zone. It's actually healthy for your for your brain. So you, I think you're right on. We have to wrap up pretty quickly. Quick other question for you. Uh, I think everyone has to deal with some form of negativity or resistance in their lives for whatever it might be. Um, what would your suggestion be, Nancy, for, for those that have to deal with negativity? Have to deal with negativity or... Yeah, how, how do you deal with it? To deal with negativity. Yeah, how do you deal with negativity? What, what do you suggest? You know what I suggest? I say to myself, negativity is not an option. Mm-hmm. I have to change the way I'm thinking. We have a nanosecond to change the way we think. Otherwise, we just start marinating in this negative talk. So if we could change it and move that energy into something productive or something more positive, it just takes a second. But you have to be willing to notice and be aware of these thoughts. Because, it's again, as I said, it's, it's, it's very conditioned. We're very conditioned. And what, re- and what we resist, Persist, Matt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what totally resist, what we resist. <laughs> yeah. And I usually say to my clients, fear, fantasize experience appearing real, which is that's what you're right. One. You can, yeah. <laughs> See, we share, we share resources. Nancy, I cannot thank you enough. I, I always love talking to you and I always learn because you always share such interesting pieces of what you're doing. Glass walking, I'll have to think about it, but who knows? <laughs> How can people find out more about your workshops? Well, first of all, Corey, I want to thank you for thinking me of thinking of me again this year. So it's really, really nice. My workshop, they can reach me at Nancy at fearlessflame.com. I'm posting a lot of stuff on Facebook right now. Fortunately, we only have one spot left wow. for our workshop. So if you get in touch with me quickly, somebody can get on. It's just it's an intimate group and it's going to be an amazing day. So it's nancy at fearlessflame.com or go onto my website, fearlessflame.com and look at all the interesting things we're doing. And thank you. Well, thank you, Nancy. So just uh, wonderful, exciting, and unique. And I wish you a continued success. 
Thank you so much. Good All luck right. to you guys. Thank you. You Thank too. You. That's Nancy Chernoff, owner of Fearless Flame.